Hello everyone, Cap here and welcome back to some more Mechabellum. I have two matches for you guys today. Both will be around 1800 MMR and some viewers did send me those replays. So let's check them out. First match here is between Fruits Punch Samurai G, interesting name, as cost control specialist with Crawlers and Phoenixes. And Red is Subikan, Subikan as speed specialist with crawlers and storm crawlers and a penis formation wait did we already watch this replay i feel like in the previous video we had this exact same start <laughs> but uh, i do believe this is uh, a new replay i'm pretty sure and these storm crawlers might work out actually also red did opt to sell one pack of the storm callers and is already going for some mustangs here yeah as speed specialist red is the aggressor here trying to push in towards the towers as quickly as possible and yeah these storm callers will shoot the tower by the looks of it will not go down instantly yeah it's just one actually not going to be enough to take down the tower right away Doesn't even matter too much. Uh, left side did come through anyways. Crawlers moving in. Taking down basically everything else. And the added Mustangs here can clean up the Phoenixes as well. At least for now. Let's see if maybe the Arclight can actually take down the Mustangs here quickly enough. Can he? Close. Nope. Cost control arc lights suck. They do not one-shot these Mustangs, and that made all the difference here in this exchange. Uh, the Arclight would have killed the Mustangs quickly enough, I believe, to protect the Phoenix there. Uh, if Blue was not Cost Control Specialist. Deployment Specialist, good for both players here. In general, oftentimes good. Round 2 especially. Just pumping out a lot of units and early on especially just pumping out chaff, more chaff, more cheap units is oftentimes uh, very good. Blue going for more arc lights and for range on the arc lights. That's quite good here. We will be able to take down all the crawlers and potentially mustangs as well. Bit opt for one sentry there to take down those storm callers and yeah looking like a clean defense here now arc lights really doing work probably haste module for red on some mustangs i would assume maybe incendiary bomb for blue Rhino Assault could also be good against the aggro player. Yep, actually going for Rhino Assault. And take a tower probably. And red did go for extended range Phoenix. Interesting. Not going for the haste module here. For the Mustangs. Some flanks here in the crawl. Uh, some flanks in the crawler. Yes, uh, some crawlers in the flank here on the left. By the way, from last turn, still trying to pull apart the army or pull away the chaff here and everything, but didn't make too much of a difference last turn. And red is now going for some level two rhinos. Yep, rhino mustang is extremely strong, and level two rhinos here all of a sudden, they do provide a lot of HP. And I think some level 1 phoenixes might not be enough to take these down. And when the rhinos uh, tank the arclight shots also the mustangs can just do all the work anyways. Though rhino drop might make a difference here. Uh, actually this one is not getting slowed whatsoever and this tower is going to fall first. 
So yeah, this is going to be a reds round here. I'm very certain. Power debuff now coming in, but I don't think it makes a difference. Almost everything already dead. Other tower debuff coming in as well though. Double tower debuff, not too bad. They are worth some flank crawlers over here. Finally wearing off though, and this level 2 Rhino can still tank everything else, I think. Oh, it's getting close, but maybe this is actually a close fight. Mustangs will take down these, but the Arc Light might take down the Mustangs. Actually, no, it's still not one-shotting, of course. Level 2 Arclight is not one-shotting the level 2 Mustangs because cost control. <laughs> so, yeah, once again, this round, or the end of that round, that little bit there was decided by cost control being bad. It's not bad, but in this uh, exchange. Missile Strike for red. Enhancement module is extremely strong. Yeah, and also Phoenixes could get leveled, for example. I would like blue to pick enhancement module here. Level the Phoenixes and sell the Phoenixes. Blue is instead going for Assault Melting Point. Interesting. I mean... Tanky Melting Points? The lower range doesn't really matter, but they them being tanky, all of a sudden they are actually a quite the good answer against the rhinos. Because they can tank quite a bit and obviously the damage is very good. So yeah, could be interesting actually. Going into melting points here to answer those rhinos. Rhino getting mobile beaconed in. What's the tower? Some fangs were added now though. Also flank... Oh, or maybe there were not flank crawlers, but just these crawlers on the right side actually. Uh, but yeah, this uh, Rhino is just moving in here. Phoenix is by the way with charge shot. Um... I feel like blue is currently working on multiple answers to the same thing. So if you pick Assault Mating Point, going for Charge Shot on the Phoenix, they are both there to answer Rhinos, basically. I mean, blue doesn't have Assault Mating or Mating Points yet, but yeah, I don't know. Um, I usually do not like going for multiple answers to the same thing, really. But maybe this was just one turn. Uh, that blue was trying to win until the first melting point came out. So now we do have the first melting point and also with super heavy armor and super heavy armor for both players by the way. And this assault melting point with super heavy armor does have 132,000 HP even though it's cost control by the way. Um, this rhino as well though 115,000. But given the damage from the melting point, uh, super heavy armor on this rhino might not make that big of a difference compared to the melting point. Uh, right side, another arc light here added to counter these mustangs. And once again, this right mini uh, flank or whatever you want to call this is actually going to win and will take the tower here again. So this is actually kind of nice for blue. Uh, one more Rhino on the flank here. And Photon Rhinos are moving in here. And this one is actually on a good path here because it will get to the melting point and can actually maybe take down the melting point with the pathing. It's working on it. But melting point with super heavy armor, too tanky is actually in the way and taking down the rhino with super heavy armor over time and it's also now tanking all those mustangs this super heavy armor melting point so clutch here uh going down now though too many mustangs also level three mustangs by the way and right side wait was there like a sentry or something 
Uh, flank did not come in. Uh, or not as quickly, at least. Our now going down. Not really going to be able to capitalize on the tower debuff here. It's going to run out and red is getting a good tower debuff now <laughs> and can finish this. Reich specialist for blue and now haste module for red. Oh yeah, by the way, Assault Mating Point made quite the difference last turn. 70% more HP um, was needed uh, to take down the Rhino. Because the Rhino was punching the Mating Point and the Mating Point did go down to like 30% or something of its current health. So it would have died without uh, Assault Mating Point. And yeah, blue is adding more melting points and getting energy absorption. So they do heal up on those rhinos. That's quite good. It will obviously depend on the engagements here. So the melting points do need to lock on to the rhinos. But once they do, they will basically not die until the rhino is dead. They will just uh, keep healing. And red is deciding or decided on some steel balls here to add into the mix. Yep, some random steel balls that just lock on to the matting points. Uh, while the matting points are still busy with the rhinos, could be quite good. Maybe good enough, we will see. Right side, one more rhino coming in and with a mobile beacon. And chaff clear is not really good enough. Right side. Oh, this is so... <laughs> Melting point did die quite quickly because it was healing from the damage on the rhino, but was locked onto by four steel balls. So engagement's kind of favorable for red here. Still not over though. This melting point still alive and well and can now heal on the rhino and finally tower debuff coming in on the right and with the tower debuff uh, these level 3 arc lights by the way also quite quite leveled and can be level 4 even uh, are taking down the final mustangs here also did not mention, but power armor did come down for the rhinos for red here. Um, increases HP and also grants immunity to slow. So sentries, for example, will not slow them anymore or oil on the ground. Quite good for aggressive play, of course. And red did get the advanced firepower control system while blue took the amplifying core. These Mustangs are absolutely disgusting again already. <laughs> Classic Mustang things. Level 4 and with this item and allied top 1 and damage even before this item by the way. Yeah, Mustangs, leveled Mustangs still kind of nasty. Uh, red with the missile strike here. Will take down quite a bit of chaff. And blue putting down the rhino drop. Probably not going to be enough against this rhino though with tags here. Would have actually been better in the middle. Uh, I'm also not fully sure why blue didn't put it in the middle here because well there's nothing just yet. Yeah some mustangs at least already so in the middle it's completely uncontested. This melting point feels kind of sad. Trying to take on all this army here, but just keeps getting locked onto by the steel balls. 
Oh, and this tower also falls before this melting point can take down the level 3 Rhino here. Right side tower going down as well, and this Rhino is still alive. Oh, sad. Will it still go down? I don't think so, yep. Rhino a Mustang, very strong combo, especially for aggressive play of course, with the Rhinos pushing in and getting full value out of the Photon Coating. EMP for red and Shield Device Specialist for um, blue. Interesting. Blue going for energy diffraction melting points. I understand why. However, I think that's a mistake. Um, energy diffraction only works if you are ahead. So you want this one okay, I guess, because it has this item. But ideally you want to have at least like level 2 melting points or something. And maybe damage items as well. And this board here with these melting points does not really look like it. Um, assault melting point just gives them more HP and not more damage. So what I'm trying to say is when you want to pick up energy diffraction, usually it only really makes sense if you have extra damage on your melting points. So either through levels or through items. And this is not quite enough. This one item on this one level one melting point. I don't think that's good enough. Um, so now the damage gets split and it won't really matter too much. The rhinos will not die, I'm pretty sure. And when the rhinos don't die, well, that's uh, GG. <laughs> so let's see how this plays out. Also, blue going for some oil here. It will not slow down the rhinos because of uh, power armor, by the way. Rhinos moving in. And... Melting points trying to work, but not doing nearly enough damage. And right side, this one Rhino just moved in as well and took the tower. So, yeah, this is uh, Blue's getting run over here now. Yep, absolute destruction. Rip. GG's. For once. We are seeing aggro working. <laughs> I feel like my previous videos all featured games where aggro was losing. But in this one apparently aggro does work still. I did like the idea of assault mating points, going to be honest. Uh, anyways though, also last turn right side was not defended as much. So this rhino did come in quite quickly here with a mobile beacon. More expensive units with the melting points going up against cheaper units like the Rhino. Um, you are always uh, kind of at a positioning disadvantage basically because uh, the cheaper units obviously can't get spammed everywhere and you with your few big units you kind of need to cover everything with the, uh, just a few units and that's not that easy. But yeah, alright. Anyways, uh, GG's. Off to the next match. All right, this one is between Lexa and Dalor. Blue is giant specialist with crawlers and sledgehammers and is adding some arc lights. And red is area specialist with crawlers and seal vaults and is unlocking and buying some wasps here around one noise. That is interesting. And also quite good here because blue does not have anti-air just yet. So it's going to be a free win here for red basically. And red is positioning aggressively here on the left side. Some crawlers behind the right tower uh, to delay the army on the right basically. And yeah. Also, this green square is not moving. Now it is. Nice. Saved. And yeah. 
by the looks of it, it will be the wasps deciding this round here. Everything else is dead now. And wasps are farming. Might even level here. Yeah, they will level. One single wasp working on the tower. Actually, might still get the. Yeah, actually, still getting the tower buff as well. Not that it matters, but. Alright. Let's see if Red has more plans for these wasps or if it's just a one round kind of free win. Charge ammo for red and missile strike for blue. Well, missile strike is going to be very sad here for red. We'll probably take down the crawlers here and these wasps, yeah. Mm. Almost too far back. Might not get all crawlers. It's close, but anyways, good enough, I guess. Um, actually putting the charged ammo on the wasps here as well. And blue is getting the standard answer and the correct answer, basically, uh, with some Mustangs here. Not that they are needed this turn, though. Because the wasps are getting taken down by the missile strike already. And red getting some more crawlers and an arc light. Yep. Crawlers actually some still went through. The 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 missile strike was a bit too far uh placed was the opponent here. Anyways. No wasps this turn, no level 2 wasps with charged shot, so, or charged ammo, I mean. That is uh, quite the big loss for Red here, and yeah, just getting absolutely destroyed now. Orbital for blue. Yep, just uh, going to defend here with actives it seems. And red did skip. And okay. <laughs> red is not giving up here. Going for more steel balls and more wasps here as well. And wasps on the right side. These mustangs seem to be going to the left. So these wasps might actually also never mind these mustangs were repositioned here so now the right side is definitely going to get won by the wasps here and wasps are also getting the range tag okay nice we are actually seeing some proper wasp play here but oh my god the first orbital <laughs> hit the wasps right away oh that's so sad <laughs> Just one soul survivor level 2 wasp here on the left. <laughs> right side though, wasps are cleaning up here. Uh, Mustangs. Why do these Mustangs go from all the way over here to the right to kill these wasps instead of towards the tower? How is that not closer? Sometimes the pathing seems a bit off. But anyways. Doesn't matter. Um, Red uh, would have lost this round anyways, but... Let's see, without the help of actives, if Red can now stabilize, maybe. Photon emission also could be a good active for Red. Redeployment potentially also kind of nice with wasps. Blue going for redeployment actually. By the way, it did actually matter that these Mustangs came all the way over here because these wasps would have leveled. 
if the Mustangs didn't come right away. So level 2 wars over here could have been a thing if Red decided to do so. If the Mustangs weren't going all the way over here. Anyway, so Red did skip. And is getting hackers with range. Uh, hackers are so good against uh, sledgehammers. Because for one, sledgehammers get hacked kind of quickly. They do tank quite a bit still. And also, if they get hacked, they the other sledgehammers need to turn around and attack them. And that takes so long because sledgehammers are turning so slowly as well. And don't have a lot of damage either compared to the health. So, yeah. Hacking sledgehammers is very valuable and will do a lot this turn. Right side was uh, kind of getting wrecked, but that's okay. Left side is now looking kind of nice, I think. Uh, some crawlers still distracting though. Arclight working overtime. Also, oh, hacker taking the Arclight here now though. Kind of nice. Uh, right side is coming in, taking the tower, and with the tower debuff, this might not be enough for Red right here. It was kind of close uh, on the left here, this turn though. And it's not over yet. Hacker still doing hacker things. Taking those level 2 sledges. And one wasp, one hero wasp, once again. <laughs> but not going to be enough. Alright. Uh, it looked so much better though, this turn for red. The hackers did do a lot. So I feel like if this turn, well, now they are actives, good actives again to defend with. Uh, I was going to say this turn I think red can win this round or will win this round, but now I'm not so sure anymore. Not with lightning storm coming down. But also blue is always investing here in actives. Also redeployment, was that even used? I'm not sure. But I feel over time red should have the better position here. Even though red does have wasps and wasps are somewhat useless. But the hackers were a really good play here for sure. Uh, blue did put down a bubble here though. Probably to protect against an active. But bubble is also really good in general uh, for blue here against the hackers at least. So the steel balls do need to lock on to the barrier and take it down. Otherwise hackers will just get stuck on the barrier and do nothing for a while. And also active here once again the missile strike. Going to take down level 2 wasps here. Yeah, just Red is just getting wrecked here left and right every round basically by actives. At least uh, for now. Okay next turn for sure though. <laughs> If, if there's no other good active coming down next turn, I believe red will win next turn. But let's see how this turn goes first. Also incendiary coming down here by red. We'll take down a lot of chaff and some mustangs and everything. But a lightning storm is so good here. Just going to take down pretty much everything. At least stuff still drives into the fire here because the right side still buys some time. So a bit of damage mitigated here. And red goes down to below 1k health. Okay. No good active please. Yeah that's no not a good active. So we are fine. Maybe. Shield drop for blue and the... Improved firepower control system for red on these wasps here. <laughs> Pimping out the wasps. Also going for overlords now. Interesting. Very interesting plays by red here. Going for double overlord with photon emission. Also has wasps. Also has hackers. Very interesting playstyle here. And blue did go for a war factory with phoenix production phoenixes definitely could be quite good here um for one against the steel balls but also against hackers also against arc lights and also against 
his own sledgehammers. So when the sledgehammers get hacked, phoenixes can pump down the hacked sledgehammers quite quickly. So that's a good choice. Also now, of course, they are also overlords. So phoenixes, very good here for, uh, for blue. Let's see if they are enough though. Would be a good round for red. Let's see. Photon helping, buying some additional time for all the units. Hacker is taking all those leveled sledgehammers. Uh, right side actually did get through here now. Red, uh, or blue rather, too focused on the left here with a huge investment from the war factory with Phoenix production on the left. Uh, that the right side was kind of neglected and with the help of the overlord, uh, red could push in on the right and the war factory is getting hacked as well. Up, taking the tower and that's a lot of damage. Up, also below 1k HP all of a sudden. <laughs> what a turnaround here. Smoke bomb by blue. Also smoke bomb by red. These wasps, by the way, allied top one in damage. Level two wasps with range here. Doing work. Why is there a chat here? I'm in a replay. Stop this. <laughs> I don't want to chat with myself. Um, red going for mechanical division on the steel balls. Some random crawlers uh, popping out. Definitely help by time for the rest of the units. For the hackers and for the overlords. And another war factory for blue. Reinforcing the left side. So blue trying to win the left side. Uh, kind of neglecting the right now. So the right will fall again and the tower will go down again. Somewhat quickly as well. Um, Would be the right call but at the same time... With the tower debuff, might be bad here because uh, these are also forward and um, these blues units will feel the full uh, effect of the tower debuff. War Factory is buying a lot of time, but now, yeah, right side did fall. Tower debuff. And Overlord and Hacker locked on again to this War Factory here. And it's getting pumped. And it is getting hacked. And the hacked War Factory insta pops the tower here. And with the tower debuff, Hacker is locked on to the other War Factory as well. And Overlord doing the damage. And uh, yeah, this is <laughs> a lot of damage and uh, GG's. Interesting. Yeah, I'm not sure um, on if you're blue here, if that was the right call to just neglect the right side like this. Our debuff definitely did not help here. Level 3 was also with Elite Marksman. I did not see that button being pressed, but that was last turn. These wasps here, allied top 1 in damage and also in so this round, total damage and also in kills. <laughs> uh, yeah, nice. Wasps seeing some action here and actually doing stuff as well. Interesting, very interesting game and interesting unit composition here. Mechdiff balls, hackers, wasps and photon overlord. Very cool. Alright, GG's. Hope you guys enjoyed. Thank you guys for watching and I will see you in the next video. Take care. Bye.